if I lost my job tomorrow, I might have savings, I might have other resources, but one by one, those go by the way, and you wind up in places like Kent City. This camp is in California, where the jobless rate is 10% higher than the national figure, but tent cities are springing up around the country. America's mortgage meltdown triggered the recession and has led to homes like these for a growing number of people. But the U.S. is not the only place where problems in the housing sector have rippled through the entire economy, as my colleague Steve Kingston now reports from Madrid. The cranes in Spain are still. Building sites silent and close to two million new homes unfinished or unsold. The housing crash goes a long way to explaining the highest rate of unemployment in Europe. Of those pouring into Spanish dole offices, well over half a million have lost jobs linked to construction. Well, I think it's the, the worst crisis I've ever seen before. I'm 35 years old and I've never known anything like that. And it's getting worse and worse every day. Ominously, the layoffs have now extended beyond construction into services, industry and agriculture. The Spanish government admits unemployment will soon soar above 4 million. And of course, as unemployment soars and household incomes fall, so too does consumer demand in Spain for all manner of products. And that's having an impact on jobs thousands of miles away. Chris Morris is in India. They're queuing up for jobs in Delhi as well. Here, they're hoping for work with the government. But the squeeze is on. I used to work for a private firm, but after the crisis, I lost my job. It's really tough to get work. If you try hard, maybe. Industries which rely on exports aren't getting orders from abroad. Factories which make garments or household goods are suffering. Half a million jobs have gone in the last three months. Because if the US and Europe aren't buying, India can't sell. Even this country's famous call centers are feeling the pinch. And in the informal sector, millions more jobs are being lost. India's economy should grow by about 6% this year, but that's much slower than before. And it's starting from such a low base that globally it makes no difference. So for anyone hoping that the big developing economies could kickstart the West out of recession, we're not there yet. Chris Morris, BBC News, Delhi. And from India back to America, where the Federal Reserve has announced yet another huge initiative today to get the economy moving and get people back to work. The Fed will pump more than a trillion dollars into the economy, partly by buying hundreds of billions of dollars in long-term government debt. The first time it has done that in more than 40 years. And still ahead here on BBC World News America, we begin our special coverage on how the global economic slowdown is playing out in Asia tonight, how China and Singapore are coping with the slide. And later, it's a condition known as March Madness, and even the President of the United States has caught it. We'll fill in our own brackets. That's coming up. Tonight, we begin our in-depth look at the impact the global recession is having on Asia. We start in China. The World Bank is forecasting that China's growth this year will be 6.5%. That is 1% lower than their previous forecast. They warn that 17 million Chinese workers could lose their jobs. Our Beijing correspondent, Quentin Somerville, has sent us this report. The world isn't buying what China's factories are selling. This juggernaut of an economy is losing speed fast. The World Bank says China will only grow at 6.5% this year. You know, this isn't just a six-month crisis, this is really a permanent shift in the growth pattern for China. So we think it was growing too fast, and it put some capacity in place that won't be used. Now it's growing too slowly, and it's going to have to make some clever policies to get back on a really sustainable growth path. That's bad news for the government. Only last week it was promising much stronger growth. We have set some major targets for this year's national economic and social development. GDP will grow by about 8% and the economic structure will further improve. And this country needs it to keep its massive population working and ensure that people keep getting richer. Already the strains are showing. When Westerners stop spending, Chinese factory workers lose their jobs. As many as 25 million could be put out of work by the slowdown, says the bank. 
So far, the anger has been directed at factory bosses, not China's leadership. But as the economy shrinks, that might not always be the case. The World Bank is predicting a year of declining house prices, rising unemployment and falling company profits. But China is still growing and that makes it an economic bright spot because the rest of the world is in far worse shape. Quentin Somerville, BBC News, Beijing. Well, back in the days when China's exports were booming and America was buying, the container ships that carried all this merchandise would often pass through Singapore. But now its port resembles a parking lot with rows of idle freighters stretching for miles and miles along the coast. Jonathan Head has sent us this report. Swinging Singapore. This tropical island state has been globalization's poster child building first world living standards on the back of booming trade and financial services. But now the good times have gone. This time around uh, the contraction from a growth of plus 20 percent export to minus 30 and 40 percent took place within a matter of two months. So the speed and drop uh, in, in demand has been truly horrendous. <laughs> trade was what brought Singapore into existence two centuries ago and still dominates the economy. Today it handles one-fifth of all the containers shipped around the world. This impressive port, it is the world's busiest and its most efficient, is literally the beating heart that has driven the frenetic pace of global trade over the past decade. So there's no better place for taking the pulse of the world's economy. And right now, the news from here is very grim. Offshore, hundreds of ships lie at anchor, waiting for cargoes that may never materialize. There's been nothing like this in living memory. The government is spending heavily to minimize the impact, dipping into its huge financial reserves for the first time. So I asked the Prime Minister, has this region's reliance on exports been a mistake? We've had no choice. Consumption, the markets are in America. Uh, India and China have been growing rapidly and their markets have been growing rapidly. But on a world scale, they're still very small and maybe one, one third, one tenth of the American and European markets put together. Oh. Marcus Wu is an early casualty of this crisis. He's a computer engineer who was laid off last month. Now he spends his mornings scouring the papers for work. The uh, classified ads is actually down to two, just two pages. It used to be pages and pages of classified ads for jobs, but now it's down to two. But uh, I'm not giving up. You know, I'm sure uh, somewhere along the way, somebody would know what I can do, and uh, probably they will give me a call. There are a few businesses thriving in these unforgiving times. Demand for moving companies is up as the foreign bankers who came here to cash in on the good times bail out. Who knows when they'll be back. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Singapore. And tomorrow we will tackle the story of the global slowdown from Japan as Matt Fry begins two days of special programs live from Tokyo. Japan has been hit hard by the economic crisis. Its exports have declined by almost 50% in the last year. So how will they cope? Join me, Matt Fry, for special coverage on BBC World News America. This is a special edition of BBC World News America, reporting to you live from Tokyo. I'm Matt Fry. Across the world, factories are becoming casualties of the economic crisis, but this Japanese steel plant is determined not to be one of them. It now produces something completely different, and I got suited up to have a look. It's a very elaborate procedure here. Got a zip up. Then to put this on. And all aboard the Shinkansen. We take a journey on a Japanese bullet train to discover why its speed and touch of class make it the envy of the world. And I'm Katty Kay in Washington, also on tonight's program. Barack Obama sends a New Year's greeting to the Islamic Republic of Iran. Yes, those are his words, and the Iranians are loving it. The ring of fire erupts again after an earthquake in the South Pacific and the volcano it's woken up isn't done yet.